tulips are too excitable. It is winter here. Look how white everything is. How quiet, how snowed in. I am learning peacefulness, lying by myself quietly. As the light lies on these white walls, this bed, these hands. I am nobody. I have nothing to do with explosions. I have given my name and my day clothes up to the nurses, and my history to the anesthetist, and my body to surgeons. They have propped my head between the pillow and the sheet cuff, like an eye between two white lids that will not shut. Stupid pupil, it has to take everything in. The nurses pass and pass, they are no trouble. They pass the way gulls pass inland in their white caps doing things with their hands, one just the same as another. So it is impossible to tell how many there are. My body is a pebble to them. They tend it as water tends to the pebbles it must run over, smoothing them gently. They bring me numbness in their bright needles. They bring me sleep. Now I have lost myself, I am sick of baggage. My patent leather overnight case, like a black pillbox. My husband and child smiling out of the family photo. Their smiles catch on to my skin. Little smiling hooks. I've let things slip. A 30-year-old cargo boat stubbornly hanging on to my name and address. They have swallowed me clear of my loving associations. Scared and bare on the green plastic pillowed trolley. I watched my tea set, my bureaus of linen, my books sink out of sight, and the water went over my head. I am a nun now. I have never been so pure. I didn't want any flowers. I only wanted to lie with my hands turned up and be utterly empty. How free it is. You've no idea how free. Peacefulness is so big it dazes you. And it asks nothing. A name tag, a few trinkets. It is what the dead close on, finally. I imagine them shutting their mouths on it, like a communion tablet. The tulips are too red in the first place. They hurt me. Even through the gift paper, I could hear them breathe lightly through their white swaddlings like an awful baby. Their redness talks to my wounds. It corresponds. They are supple. They seem to float, so they weigh me down, upsetting me with their sudden tongues and their color. A dozen red lead sinkers round my neck. Nobody watched me before. Now I am watched. The tulips turn to me and the window behind me. For once a day, the light slowly widens and slowly thins. And I see myself, flat, ridiculous, a cut paper shadow between the eye of the sun and the eyes of the tulips, and I have no face. I've wanted to efface myself. The vivid tulips eat my oxygen. Before they came, the air was calm enough, coming and going, breath by breath, without any fuss. Then the tulips filled it up like a loud noise. Now the air snags and eddies round them, the way a river snags and eddies round the sunken, rust-red engine. They concentrate my attention. It was happy, playing and resting, without committing itself. The walls also seem to be warming themselves. The tulips should be behind bars, like dangerous animals. They are opening like the mouth some great African cat, and I am aware of my heart. It opens and closes its bowl of red blooms out of sheer love of me. The water I taste is warm and salt like the sea, and comes from a country far away as hell. Poppies in October. Even the sun clouds this morning cannot manage such skirts. 
For the woman in the ambulance whose red heart blooms through her coat so astoundingly. A gift, a love gift, utterly unasked for by a sky paley and flamily igniting its carbon monoxide by eyes dulled to a halt under bowlers. Oh my God, what am I that these late mouths should cry open in a forest of frost in a dawn of cornflowers? Daddy, you do not do, you do not do any more black shoe in which I have lived like a foot for 30 years, poor and white, barely daring to breathe or hurt you. Daddy, I have had to kill you. You died before I had time, marble heavy, a bag full of God, ghastly statue with one gray toe big as a Frisco seal and a head in the freakish Atlantic where it pours bean green over blue in the waters off beautiful Nosset. I used to pray to recover you, ach, do, in the German tongue in the Polish town, scraped flat by the roller of wars, wars, wars. But the name of the town is common. My Polak friend says there are a dozen or two. So I never could tell where you put your foot, your root. I never could talk to you. The tongue stuck in my jaw. It's stuck in a barbed wire snare. Eek, 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 eek. I could hardly speak. I thought every German was you. And the language obscene, an engine, an engine, chuffing me off like a Jew. A Jew to Dachau, Auschwitz, Belsen. I began to talk like a Jew. I think I may well be a Jew. The snows of the Tyrol, the clear beer of Vienna, are not very pure or true. With my gypsy ancestress and my weird luck and my tarok pack and my tarok pack, I may be a bit of a Jew. I have always been scared of you, with your Luftwaffe, your gobbledygoo, and your neat moustache and your Aryan eye, bright blue. Panzerman, Panzerman, oh you, not God but a swastika, so black no sky could squeak through. Every woman adores a fascist, the boot in the face, the brute, brute heart of a brute like you. You stand at the blackboard, Daddy, and the picture I have of you, a cleft in your chin instead of your foot. But no less a devil for that, no not any less the black man who bit my pretty red heart in two. I was ten when they buried you. At twenty I tried to die and get back, back, back to you. I thought even the bones would do. But they pulled me out of the sack and they stuck me together with glue. And then I knew what to do. I made a model of you, a man in black with a mine camp look and a love of the rack and the screw, and I said, I do, I do. So, Daddy, I'm finally through. The black telephone's off at the root, the voices just can't worm through. If I've killed one man, I've killed two. The vampire who said he was you and drank my blood for a year, seven years, if you want to know. Daddy, you can lie back now. There's a stake in your fat black heart, and the villagers never liked you. They are dancing and stamping on you. They always knew it was you. Daddy, Daddy, you bastard, I'm through. Ariel, stasis in darkness, then the substanceless blue pour of tor and distances. God's lioness, how one we grow, pivot of heels and knees, the furrow splits and passes, sister to the brown arc of the neck I cannot catch, nigger eye berries casting dark hooks, black sweet blood mouthfuls, 
shadows. Something else hauls me through air, fires, hair, flakes from my heels. White Godiva iron peel, dead hands, dead stringencies. And now I foam to wheat, a glitter of seas. The child's cry melts in the wall. And I am the arrow, the dew that flies, suicidal at one with the drive, into the red eye, the cauldron of morning. Lady Lazarus. I have done it again. One year in every ten I manage it. A sort of walking miracle. My skin bright as a Nazi lampshade. My right foot a paperweight. My face a featureless fine Jew linen. Peel off the napkin, oh my enemy. Do I terrify? Yes, yes, Herr Professor, it is I. Can you deny the nose, the eye pits? The full set of teeth, the sour breath will vanish in a day. Soon, soon the flesh the grave cave ate will be at home on me, and I a smiling woman. I am only thirty, and like the cat, I have nine times to die. This is number three. What a trash to annihilate each decade, what a million filaments. The peanut-crunching crowd shoves in to see them unwrap me hand and foot, the big strip tease. Gentlemen, ladies, these are my hands, my knees. I may be skin and bone, I may be Japanese. Nevertheless, I am the same identical woman. The first time it happened, I was ten. It was an accident. The second time I meant to last it out and not come back at all. I rocked shut as a seashell. They had to call and call and pick the worms off me like sticky pearls. Dying is an art, like everything else. I do it exceptionally well. I do it so it feels like hell. I do it so it feels real. I guess you could say I've a call. It's easy enough to do it in a cell. It's easy enough to do it and stay put. It's the theatrical comeback in broad day to the same place, the same face, the same brute, amused shout, a miracle that knocks me out. There is a charge for the eyeing of my scars. There is a charge for the hearing of my heart. It really goes. And there is a charge, a very large charge, for a word or a touch or a bit of blood or a piece of my hair or my clothes. So, so, Herr Doctor, so, Herr Enemy. I am your opus, I am your valuable. The pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. I turn and burn. Do not think I underestimate your great concern. Ash, ash, you poke and stir, flesh, bone. There is nothing there, a cake of soap, a wedding ring, a gold filling. Hear God, hear Lucifer, beware, beware. Out of the ash I rise with my red hair, and I eat men like air.